Well everyone, we are less than one week away from WWDC on June 10th, and in this video what I want to talk about is six of the most anticipated features coming to iOS 18. So let's get into it. So two quick things before we get into the actual video and those feature sets. The first thing is I'm gonna not mention anything AI related because obviously we know there's gonna be a big section and a big push on the AI side with buzzwords and different features. We just don't really know how Apple's gonna implement it into iOS 18 and how that's gonna work in our day-to-day -day lives. So just know something AI related is coming to all of Apple's ecosystem and stay tuned for that. And then secondly, this is gonna be specific to iOS 18 and we're gonna talk about you know iPadOS 18 and macOS later on. But the very first feature that's coming is going to be on the customization side, and that's gonna be the ability to now move apps and widgets around without following that grid that goes from top left to bottom right. So since the very beginning where Apple finally let us move applications around, back I believe it was with iPhone OS 3 or iOS 3, whatever it was called back then, Apple did allow us to then reorganize our applications back then, but again, if you go into your iPhone right now and try to rearrange your apps, it's still gonna follow and force you to go to that top left corner, and then after that, it will follow that same kind of path from top left to bottom right. Now with iPadOS 17, we got a little bit of a glimpse into what this could be like with Apple allowing us to put widgets anywhere on the screen without following that grid. Now this only applied to widgets, so if you do try to put an application icon in a random part of a screen, it's still gonna follow that top left corner, but we now know what it looks like to have iPadOS widgets all over the iPad screen and in no particular order. So that same thing and that same feature set is gonna come to iOS 18, and I could see this kind of happening a little bit more in depthly, like being able to arrange how many applications we can go alongside the horizontal axis, because right now there's only four applications at a maximum, and it would be nice to maybe go down to three or two, or maybe add five or six, and it could take us back to those jailbreaking days when I used to jailbreak my iPhone and have like 30 apps across one row. But we will get some nice home screen customizations. And the second feature, again, in the same light, Apple's gonna allow us to change and kind of customize the colors of our icons. Now, we could technically sort of do that right now with iOS shortcuts and replacing it with different app icons, but again, you still get that little shortcut animation and it's not a perfect situation. Now, the way Apple's gonna implement it, we're still unsure about it. Apple is saying that maybe we'll be able to change based on categories, the types of colors and the types of hues and things like that. And I don't know if we'll be able to just import a bunch of different kind of custom icons and use those as default icons, but there is some sort of customization coming on a per app icon basis as well, so stay tuned for that. The next thing coming to iOS 18 has to do with Apple Maps. Now, if you did watch one of my more recent videos that talked about all the different iOS features that are specific for travel and making your life easier, it really helped me understand how much better Apple Maps has gotten because when Apple Maps first released, it was kind of written off. It didn't work nearly as well as Google Maps, and that made me move to Google Maps and use Google Maps to this day as my main Maps application. Now, Apple Maps has definitely come a long way, and some people are saying that now it's better than Apple Maps and vice versa, and now it's a kind of a one-to-one -one comparison, but a new feature that's coming to Apple Maps is the ability to have a custom route planning. As of right now, if you try to map yourself to a location, Apple will give you maybe two or three different route options, maybe the quickest route, the least amount of miles route, or the least distance route, and things like that. But now you'll be able to have your own custom routes from beginning to end. Now, I actually really like this feature because I live in a very condensed area, so there's always a lot of traffic, especially going to New York and to different cities and things like that. So sometimes when you just follow blindly what Apple Maps or Google Maps tells you, it's not really the best case scenario. Being able to know the back roads and things like that and being able to implement that and customize that for whatever your route planning is, is going to be a nice little game changer in the Apple Maps ecosystem. So let me know in the comment down below if that's something that you're gonna be wanting moving forward, if that's something you're gonna use. And I'm curious to know how long it's gonna take if you do do a custom map route and definitely stay subscribed because we will be testing that out once we do get our hands on iOS 18 beta one. The next big tangible update coming to iOS 18 is gonna be all about Control Center. So Control Center is supposed to get a nice facelift and a revamp, it's gonna look a little bit different, feel a little bit different, and I'm sure, I know I wasn't gonna mention AI, but I'm sure Apple's gonna implement some sort of machine learning or AI to make this a little bit better. For instance, the first thing that's happening is that Apple's changing up the Shazam slash music recognition app, so that's always gonna be persistent in your Control Center. And then secondly, if you guys are big into HomeKit, and I definitely have a video coming out with my Ultimate HomeKit tour, which hopefully you guys will see later this week, but as of right now, Apple will intelligently put maybe your top six accessories, your HomeKit accessories in your control center. But for me, for instance, a lot of the time, it's not the ones that I actually want or the ones that I actually need. For instance, whenever I wanna turn off the light in my daughter's room when I'm in her room to put her to bed, it still is giving me maybe the hue lights that are downstairs in my living room and it's not really intelligently giving me the ones that I want. So I'm now getting a nice little revamp to HomeKit being a priority in the control center will be nice, but expect some sort of control center revamp for iOS 18. 
The next feature is all about iMessage and communication as well as FaceTime. So the first one is going to be that we should be getting some new iMessage effects and the ability to then have effects built into the actual message itself. So if you are aware or maybe not aware, you can send a text message effect on any actual entire message, but with an iOS 18 revamp, you'll be able to pick individual words to have certain effects on those individual words. And then also with the FaceTime effects, so if you are using FaceTime and let's say you do the two thumbs up or a peace sign or the rock on sign, it'll give you these cool little animations and Easter eggs, which are always cool to see. And Apple should be adding a few more of those. Again, nothing game changing, but something that's going to be able to let you personalize your iMessage and your FaceTime experience just that much more. And then last but not least, Apple's set to revamp the entire settings app inside of iOS 18. Now you may or may not have noticed, but on iPadOS as well as macOS, Apple has completely revamped and reorganized what the settings app is like to make it a little bit easier to navigate. So Apple should be bringing that over to iOS 18, as well as some much more powerful search functionality, because I know if you really want to get all the way deep into the accessibility settings and into multiple menus, being able to just search something very quickly through Spotlight or even through the actual search engine inside of the settings app makes your life that much easier, which is something that I personally rely on. For instance, to get into iCloud Keychain or to see my passwords and things like that, I just swipe down on Spotlight and type in passwords and it takes me there because it takes like four, five, six steps to get into the actual iCloud Keychain. So that's just one example of many that will be coming to kind of help you reorganize and relook at what the settings app is and to help you actually navigate it that much easier. So when it comes to these feature sets, that's what we're most anticipating and the things that are probably more realistic. I'm sure Apple's gonna add some stuff to the camera application to make it a little bit more pro, especially for the pro models. It would be amazing if Apple gave us some sort of Samsung Dex like experience with the 15 Pro and Pro Max, maybe giving a stage manager when you plug in an actual Thunderbolt cable and plug it into an actual external display. That would be very, very cool. But again, those are more like wish list items as opposed to things that are realistic, right? Because right now, as we're getting farther and farther in iOS's kind of lifespan, iOS is pretty mature at this point, so there isn't gonna be any wow factor, or anything kind of mind blowing. It's gonna be more quality of life improvements, making some small changes and small UI differences to make it feel a little bit fresher, but I don't see a big overhaul of the entire iOS 18 being a thing, just little things to kind of, like I said earlier, make your life that much easier. And again, we will be getting a lot of AI centric things to make your life easier without you even knowing it. We're just curious to know what Apple and how Apple is gonna implement it because Apple likes to do things the Apple way, even if it is a technology or a service or a software that that's been done in the past. But let me know in the comment down below what you think. What are you most excited for for iOS 18 or WWDC? Will you be putting the iOS 18 beta on your main device? You know, for better or for worse, I will be doing that. I do that every single year. And definitely stay tuned for some video coverage on exactly what Apple's doing on WWDC. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know that you made it to the end. And if you guys wanna watch more videos like this one, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace. Definitely stay subscribed because we got some awesome videos in the pipeline. Peace.